I really started to seek the Lord on the matter and He showed me that not only are these three dreams related to each other and connected, but they're prophetic, they are relevant, and they are literally happening before our eyes in this country now. It was actually when my parents were listening to Pastor J.D. Farage's prophecy update a couple weeks ago, and he talked about the great American flag that was torn in two. Um, it was the world's largest American flag, and they called me up because they knew I had a dream in 2017 exactly about that. And they were like, you need to go watch this section. And it was then that I really felt the Lord said, you need to share these dreams. Now is the time. What the Lord showed me next was astonishing. Where is all this heading? What is the next major event on God's prophetic time clock? Hands down, no doubt about it, the rapture of the church. In August of 2015, I had a prophetic dream that would lead to two more prophetic dreams, one in 2017 and one in 2019, that appear to ultimately be finding their fulfillment now. I had no idea that they were all connected because they were so far apart. But recently the Lord gave me like a fresh revelation about these three dreams and that they're not individual, but they're collective. So I've never really felt led to share publicly any prophetic dreams I've had in the past. But in light of the recent events, the Lord has heavily impressed it on my heart that He gave me these dreams for a specific purpose and that while they were meant to be kept silent for a season, now is the time to speak them out and share what He has shown me. I'm literally seeing the things the Lord has shown me through these dreams happening in our country this year especially and it's, it's alarming. So the first dream I had was actually August 22nd, 2015. It was a dream where I was shown a United States map and my attention was brought to two locations on the map. The first location was on the East Coast, New York City. And the second location was on the West Coast, Washington. I could hear Revelation 18 being narrated in my head, um, Mystery Babylon. Fallen. Fallen is Babylon the Great. She has become a dwelling for demons and a haunt for every impure spirit. And right before I woke up, I was told Psalm 75. The next day, the Lord brought to my memory the dream and the chapter. I went to Psalm 75 and uh, it's actually titled, Do Not Destroy. Basically, some of the bullet points in that chapter are God addressing the proud, arrogant, wicked nature of man. It is he who judges. Interestingly, in the dream that I had the night before regarding a location on the west and one on the east, it's actually a verse in that chapter that says that no one from the west nor the east shall exalt themselves. If I go to the next dream, which was actually in September of 2017, this time I was shown an American flag. The first thing I noticed was how massive it was. I guess I compare it to an IMAX theater screen. As I'm watching this massive American flag be elevated up into the sky, below it is a tarmac and it's a massive tarmac and it's full of like military armed vehicles and they looked like they were preparing for a war but this war was going to be waged on America that it was within our own borders as I'm seeing this flag being elevated up it's almost as if it's signifying the boastfulness of a once most powerful nation 
States of the United States of America is the most powerful nation on earth. Period. Period. It's not even close. No nation attacks us directly or our allies because they know that's the path to ruin. No nation attacks us. But once it reached a high point, it quickly divided abruptly into three segments, red, blue, and white. The red shot over to one side and then the blue to another. And as fast as it happened, the white shot up and vanished in the clouds. The third dream I just had about six months ago regarding riots was in late 2019. And in the dream, I was laying in bed with my husband and it was in our house that we're in now. It was exactly like it is now, um, every detail. I could distinctly hear violent protesting and rioting happening outside of our home. But the interesting thing is I felt complete peace. I didn't feel the need to get up and to try and defend ourselves. And I just looked over at my husband in the dream and said, I think this is it. I think the rapture is about to happen. I could feel it. I could sense it. And then I had the question of, are we ready? I didn't know why I thought that because I know my heart before the Lord, but I really felt that that was the Lord showing me the spiritual condition of a lot of people not being ready for that event, for the rapture. Um, the last thing in that third dream that was really significant was that my father appeared in the dream and he's a pastor in my waking life. And um, so he spoke in a dream saying, no, this isn't the rapture, but it's coming soon. And it has to do with the number 11. I started seeking the Lord out about each one individually as they happened, but I didn't really have any full revelation as to what they meant because they were years ahead of their fulfillment. And just this year, the Lord stirred it up in my heart to connect the dots and has revealed to me the connection of all three of them. And it's literally telling a story right before my eyes as I'm watching the news. I'm seeing what the Lord put on my heart through these dreams happening. I didn't put it together that Washington was on the west, New York City was on the east. The very next morning, Psalm 75 referenced an east and a west. Um, and judgment coming. When I journaled this the next day, as I was praying about it, the Lord gave me this word. Um, he said to me, and I typed this down, Hear me, all ye Zion and inhabitants of the earth. It is I who has a controversy with the land. I have kept silent, but silent I shall no longer be. Man's heart is on evil continually, and its intentions have reached my ears. Out of my mouth rolls thunder. I strike the land with intent to divide. So, obviously in 2015, I had no idea that there would be ultimately a massive divide in our nation coming on in 2020. And what I find really interesting is that these two areas that were pointed out to me in this dream, New York City, just so happened to really be ground zero for COVID-19, which shut down our entire nation, our entire economy, and is basically ushering this nation into an economical collapse. Queens in New York is the worst infected district in what is now the world's worst infected city. And the doctors and nurses don't know what's hit them. How is it? How? Biblical. I kid you not. COVID-19 is going to clobber the global economy. The closing bell on Wall Street yesterday, well, 
certainly sounded more like an alarm. Investors were taking their money and running for the hills. The Dow plunged more than a thousand points in a single day for only the third time in its history. On the other coast in Washington, we know in Seattle, that's really becoming ground zero for the race wars. And it's almost like a utopian is being set up within certain blocks where um, it's becoming its own nation within a nation over there. that interesting five years ago dreamt that there would be Washington and New York City um, involved in some sort of major judgment that would ultimately lead to a divide the red went in one direction the blue into the other it was like they split as like a nation divided and then the white actually shot up into the clouds and vanished so the next day as the lord often does after a prophetic dream he compelled me to dig a little bit deeper into the interpretation of the dream so the first thing that i was led to do was search out the significance of the colors biblically i'm always going to refer things to the bible because we must view any type of prophetic words or visions through the lens of scripture. I right away knew the white to represent the bride of Christ during the rapture. Um, that was very evident to me. But the red and the blue, I assumed was representing a divide between two parties in this country. And I think in some sense it's true because we do see a huge divide going on in our nation between Republican and Democratic. We know that. In this recent last four years, we've seen it even that much more intensely. But what really struck me was in the last few days, as I was preparing my heart for this video, the Lord showed me that there's actually a secondary meaning to those colors pertaining to why I was given that in the dream. The royal blue in the flag actually can signify revelation and authority, while the red can signify fire and war. So what the Lord spoke into my heart was that this dream actually was representing the main event that would ultimately usher in the book of Revelation, and it would be a raging war like fire spreading on authority. Um, this is exactly what we're witnessing today is we're seeing violent riots literally burning down cities and they're attacking our nation's first line of defense, the police. Ultimately, it is a war on authority that is going on right now. But it wasn't until about a week and a half ago while I was watching Pastor J.D. Farage in his weekly prophecy update, he shared a clip from the acuity flag that was ripped into two, divided because of a storm. We call it the world's tallest symbol of freedom. So imagine the shock last night when acuity's American flag was torn. That is by far the um, most damaged I've ever seen one of our flags. You know, it was, I, I've never seen anything like it. And it just so happened that this flag was the world's largest American free flying flag. So of course, I just, I just almost fell out of my chair thinking this is pretty incredible. This dream I had in 2017 about this American flag that was massive in size, rising up and dividing. I'm watching an illustration of it on the news just a week and a half ago. Here I had no previous knowledge of an American flag that large being flown and that it would in the air split and divide at the same time as there was below some form of civil war being prepped in our nation in this dream 
two years prior to what's happening now. I wanted to know what the number 11 meant and why I dreamt about it in context of riding outside and the rapture coming soon. When I woke up from that dream, the next morning, the Lord placed it on my heart again to look up the number 11, not in worldly terms, but in biblical terms. We know that the Lord uses numbers. They are very significant to Him um, through scripture. The number 11 is a very interesting number. I didn't know until I started researching, but the number 11 typically biblically means chaos disorder and judgment. That would make sense with rioting and everything taking place that there would be chaos and disorder. Obviously at the time of this dream there was no rioting going on so it was definitely something that was future tense but what I actually found really interesting was that I found a secondary meaning on a biblical level to this number. In addition to it meaning chaos and disorder and judgment, it can actually mean a transition into something new. It was actually in Deuteronomy 11.11 11 when it's announced that the Israelites, they entered into the promised land. The Lord blew my mind on this as I was getting ready to do this video, that there's a parallel that while a Christ-rejecting world is about to enter into a transitional period of something new that involves chaos, disorder, and ultimately God's wrath and judgment, is parallel at the same time that God's people who put their trust in the Lord while here are going to be transitioned into the promised land. I just really had this kind of light bulb moment where I realized what the Lord was saying, that the number 11 in this dream, as there was rioting and protests going on outside of my home, that I would sense the rapture was that close. But first, there would be chaos and disorder, but at the same time, look up because those that are putting their trust in Christ are going to transition into the promised land through the rapture. The Lord really impressed it on me that these three dreams are telling a story. That the first dream was to point out that Washington and New York City were simultaneously going to be ground zeroes that would ultimately lead to the collapse of a once most exalted and proud nation. That considering that ground zero for COVID-19 happens to be New York City and ground zero for this race war happens to be in Washington, we partner that with the second dream that depicts a nation divided against itself and the flag dividing. It seems to be ushering in civil war within our nation. The final dream that clearly indicates that there will be riots in suburban areas and at the time when we would see this happening, we would ultimately see the rapture find its fulfillment. The world would be ushered into judgment, chaos and disorder, while those that put their trust in Christ would be ushered into the promised land. <sighs> Any of us that have been watching Bible prophecy and studying scripture regarding eschatology end times, we know that this is different, that this time that we are in is different. And it calls it all, both small and great, rich and poor, free and bond, to receive a mark in their right hand or in their foreheads. He shall magnify himself above all, but in his estate shall he honor the God of forces and a God whom his fathers knew not. And the ten horns which thou sawest on ten kings which have received no kingdom as yet, but received power as kings, one hour with the beast. And the third angel sounded, and there fell a great star from heaven, burning as it were a lamp. And the name of the star is called Wormwood, and many men died of the waters because they were made bitter. And unto the angel of the church of the Laodiceans write, I know thy works, that thou art neither cold nor hot. I would thou wert cold or hot. So then, because thou art lukewarm, and neither cold nor hot, I will spew thee out of my mouth. Because thou sayest, I am rich, and increased with goods, and have need of nothing, 
and knowest not that thou art wretched and miserable and poor and blind and naked. And he shall confirm the covenant with many for one week. In the midst of the week, he shall cause the sacrifice and the oblation to cease. Set thy face against Gog, the land of Magog, and prophesy against him, and say, Thus saith the Lord God, Behold, I am against thee, O Gog, the chief prince of Meshach and Tubal, and I will turn thee back, and put hooks into thy jaws, and I will bring thee forth, and all thine army. If I shut up heaven that there be no rain, or if I command the locusts to devour the land, or if I send pestilence among my people, if my people, which are called by my name, shall humble themselves, and pray, and seek my face, and turn from their wicked ways, then will I hear from heaven, and will forgive their sin, and will heal their land. This is not a drill. This is not a drill. To a God-rejecting world, God's judgment, chaos, and disorder are coming. And in some ways are already beginning to see the foreshadowing of them now. But those that have put their trust in Christ and are looking for his soon return are going to be transitioning not into chaos and disorder and judgment, but rather transitioning into the promised land. So I really question because I grew up a pastor's daughter in the church. Both my parents love the word of God and love Bible prophecy. So I was versed at a young age with the words, the rapture of the church and end times. It was just something that I grew to understand pretty quickly in life, but I kind of went my own way in my late teens and I spent a good decade just kind of like one of the ones among the 99 who had ran away. When God came and reignited a fire in my heart for him, and uh, I haven't looked back since. And over the last 10 years, the Lord has been speaking into my life, night visions and revelations and, and visions. And we know in the book of Joel that that is something that is prominent in the last days. But I didn't know why was I given these significant visions and prophetic words from the Lord when I don't really have a platform to share them on. And I don't know the answer to that. And uh, it's really not for me to know, to question God as the word says, am I, who am the clay going to question the potter as to why he's made me that way? I don't know why I had these dreams and these revelations and why they are literally happening before my eyes, but I do know the Lord put it on my heart to share these things. And I don't know who you are out there that needed to hear this, but at the end of the day, what it boils down to is the Lord is about to judge a God-rejecting world. And His people are not appointed unto wrath. He loves you. If you haven't put your trust in Him, this world is like a sinking ship. It's quicksand. It's not solid rock. And there's only one lifeboat that can get you off of this sinking ship before it goes down. And His name is Jesus Christ. Once the ship goes down, there's going to be no lifeboat that can offer you any value because you'll already be in the raging waters. So take it seriously, pray about it, and um, the Lord will reveal himself to you. God bless. Enter ye in at the straight gate, for wide is the gate, and broad is the way that leadeth to destruction and many there be which go in thereat. Because straight is the gate, and narrow is the way which leadeth unto life, and few there be that find it.